Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Montclair. 
and welcome to our last worship service in 2020. And it has been a year, hasn't it? One of the things that has helped me get through these really challenging times has been your sustained presence, not just on Sunday mornings, but throughout the week in countless ways, great and small. Thank you for continuing to show up. My name is Marcus Greyhawk. My pronouns are he, him, and his, and I'm proud to serve as this congregation's director of music ministries. If you're watching this service live on Facebook or YouTube, we invite you to share your name in the comment section. If you wish, also your location, let us and each other know that you are here. And we also invite you to join us in singing the hymns. They will be led today by our member Dana Moore. Oh, 
Dark of winter, let your peace flow through us. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, whatever age, identity, history, ability, gender, sexual orientation, or political affiliation, you're welcome to bring your full self here. Grounded in faith, we come together to nurture the soul, inspire hope, and bring into being a more just and loving world. Today's service, called Stillness Comes, reminds us that sometimes, without our planning, stillness comes. It settles in and steals us from urgency. Stillness might come by way of a snowfall, illness, age, or exhaustion. This service invites us to embrace stillness, planned or necessitated, both as a way of self-preservation and spiritual deepening. If you have school-aged children, please register for our Innovative Children's Religious Education Program. And if you are joining us at 10 a.m., please continue with us for a virtual Connection Cafe beginning at 11 a.m. Check your email and Realm announcements for the Zoom link. It's time to light our chalice, a beacon to guide us through these times together. Perhaps you have a chalice or candle at home, anything that you can illumine. Let's light our collective chalices as we share our chalice lighting affirmation. Let us open our eyes to see what is beautiful. Let us open our minds to learn what is true. And let us open our hearts to love one another. Our invocation today comes from Joseph Seaman Cotter. I am so tired and weary, so tired of the endless fight. So weary of waiting the dawn and finding endless night that I ask but rest and quiet. Rest, rest for the days that are gone and quiet for the little space that I must journey on. Rest for the days that are gone and quiet for the little space that I must journey on. This ends the invocation. The invitation for prayer and rest that follows, composed by David Haas, is based on a text from the Navajo, a first people's prayer.
peace before us, peace behind us, peace under our feet. We enter into this space of peace and of depth, each as we are called, finding a soft meditation, a deep reflection, an ardent prayer, each as we are called, yet all together. And we enter into this space by hearing the lamentations, the requests, and the remembrances of our community. Let us hear one another to heal one another. We light this candle for peace, for the peace that stills our doing and allows us to rest in our being. We light this candle for peace and pray it tends those who need it most. We light this candle for love, for the love that holds us steady and with its warmth and attention. We light this candle for love and pray it tends those who need it most. We light this candle for light, for the light that awakens us, that guides us, that reminds us of our own inner brilliance. We light this candle for light and pray that it tends those who need it most. And we light this final candle for the joys and sorrows that have not been spoken aloud. In the silence that follows, you are encouraged to speak the names of those you are holding in your prayers or meditations, or write them into the chat. May we hold this silence as this silence holds us. May our listening bring forth acts of love. Our prayer comes this morning from the writings of the Reverend Gretchen Haley. She calls this piece, There is a time to let go. There is a time to let go of the resistance the steadfast march to complete the to-do list for parents and activists and for all who love this life, these people, these mountains, this sky. There is a time to rest and to trust the world will go on, filled with partners at the ready, all of us splitting shifts on this project of building and healing tending and turning. Breath and being require their own practice, their own attention, and the heart needs time for becoming stronger after the shattering, the opening wider, the learning to love more and again. So come into this place of rest. Study stillness and joy. Know your belovedness like a memory calling out from the center of your being, connecting every little piece of everything to everyone and all of us. Feel here gratitude rising and praise for the chance to begin again this day with hope. In prayer, in breath, we hold this stillness. Amen. Tom Parente, composer in residence, shares our next piece. This is his improvisation on the hymn, How Can I Keep From Singing? This hymn was beloved by Carolyn Burr, who we lost earlier this year. Tom prepared this piece in Carolyn's honor.
Still, still, by Zuri Hilton. Your body freezes. You're not at your best. Maybe you lost the battle or failed the test. Maybe you're contemplating about what to do next. Maybe you're scared stiff. Maybe you just need to rest. Be still for a moment as you review your goals, how you let yourself down, how life can be so cold. You need to take a moment to put it in context. What can you do better? How can you find success? You can just stand still, wait for it to be okay. Meditate on your goals, breathe and take a break. Once you work to improve and move past today, never let up, cause life goes on anyway. And it isn't about how many hits you took, it's about how many times you showed them you're not sure. You can stand still, but time doesn't wait. It's the life-changing events that make you rededicate. Cause until you get still and focus on what went right or wrong, you'll never have strength to finish strong. Thank you so much, Zuri Hilton, for sharing your poem with us. We have been really moved by the poetry that you have been putting online, and it was a gift, a special gift for you to offer that in worship. Thanks. So we have a slightly different way of doing the sermon this Sunday. We wanted to share with you 
an opportunity to reflect with us on some pressing questions about stillness. And so we will pose questions to one another and we will reflect on those questions and we imagine and we hope that you will be reflecting as well. It's a chance for us to have a community experience in this time of social distancing. So our first question, our first question is a question about stillness. When was the last time that you were still, truly still? Would you like to go first? Me? Sure. You mean when was the first time I was still or when was the last time I was still? When was the last time you were still? That is just a joke on myself because I am known as someone who isn't still in the way that people understand stillness in bodies. So I am able to achieve stillness with great intention because I tend to move and bounce. <laughs> it's what I do, right? So, but, you know, besides that embodied physical notion of stillness, I, I find stillness in developing craft, mm -hmm. whether it's the craft of guitar playing or audio engineering or of learning how to do something that requires a lot of attention on a focused exercise or task, that's where I feel and experience stillness. So mm. the last time I had stillness was when I was upstairs uh, in our attic studio, uh, running through some guitar forms and some chords to really do my best to embody and internalize, you know, how better to play guitar, but, but that's a place that is easy for me anyway to, to go to, to find stillness. I appreciate that. I appreciate the, um, the recognition of stillness being a place of attention and intention, attention with an A and intention with an I. Uh, that strikes me uh, for my understanding of stillness as well. I often think of when asked the question, when was the last time that mm -hmm. I was still? Well, when was the last time that I was asleep, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's a certain stillness in being asleep, but the truth is that there isn't much attention or intention that is being offered in that space of sleep. Perhaps stillness for me and the last time when I was still is, is a question of when was the last time that I was truly focused and present and what I was doing was not trying to get out of that moment, but to be in that moment even deeper. And so for me, the last time that I was still was when I was focused just pulling together holiday gifts for dear ones. And as I was writing on the cards, I was thinking about the last time that I saw them. And my heart was with them in that place. And that was a deep attention to our relationship as I was writing about our relationship on the card. Yeah. So and for me, the physical things that I was doing is I was putting the guitar on, making sure the strap was in the right place and the neck was at the right angle. I was making sure that my arms felt free and that I was holding the pick properly and my mm. hand was in the right space and that I was just using the necessary amount of tension to make the note. And all this may sound detailed, but you can't pay that much attention to what your body is doing unless you've created some sense of stillness mm. around you. Mm. So stillness, it's not necessarily being steady in body and completely still. It's about stilling our attention and our intention and giving focus. So all this talk about stillness, it makes me think about why over-functioning 
the lack of stillness is so valued in our culture. And I would like to pose this question to you. Why is over-functioning so valued in our culture? Well, I'm really glad you asked me that question. So our culture prizes getting things done. Our culture values us for what we do. That's why the typical question Americans ask one another is, what do you do? Not, what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> Not what do you love or, you know, what makes you sing, you know, or what fills your heart with joy? What do you do? Because commerce is so important and it's so easy for us growing up and drenched with this culture to not recognize that that is not necessarily the healthiest thing. It's just who we are and how we've grown up in it. So the reason over-functioning is valued in this culture are many fold. One of them is simply classism. Mm -hmm. Because what do you do? Well, most of us do it for someone else. And when I was an electrician, what I was doing, I was making myself a living, but I was making someone else rich, mm -hmm. right? And so we have this culture that has, from our inception in this country, depended on other people to make a small group of people rich. It's mm. most easily seen, you know, in the fact uh, that this nation was founded with slavery as an economic model mm -hmm. because we were expected to give our very lives, yes. not just our time, but our lives mm. to make a very small handful of white men rich, mm. right? And this comes from many places, but one of the places that's easiest to see it coming from is from Puritanism. And John Calvin, who is the foundational theologian for Puritanism, makes it very clear that he believes human beings so tend toward doing bad things that we must be given something productive for the sake of the common good or for those who have been elected to the kingdom of heaven is how he would put it. Or else we may fall prey to the temptation of Satan. Oh dear. Well, I don't believe in Satan. Um, though I do believe that there are things that are devilish. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that are devilish is the notion that we're all always supposed to be on the clock and on the job and making money for someone else. Mm -hmm. My notion of freedom and family values means we have unstructured, unfettered time to develop our inner potential and to spend time on our families and our communities. Mm -hmm. So the reason that overfunctioning is valued in our culture is deeply theological, which is why it's important that we talk about it in congregational context like we are today. That's powerful. Thank you. So now it's my turn to ask you a question. All right. So what do we mean when we talk about stillness? Mm. What do we mean? And I hear in that, so what do we not mean? Mm -hmm. It's interesting because sometimes when I bring up the concept of stillness, one of the first things that I hear back from, from folks in this conversation is, I don't have time, or I'm not really someone who does stillness, or isn't stillness just another way to take care of yourself and, and give yourself the things that you think you deserve, which is all about the ego? And honestly, I understand exactly where those responses are coming from, but I think they're part of the challenge that we are called to overcome. Stillness isn't about taking a break. Stillness is about connection. You see, when we move so quickly through our days, and speaking for myself, when I'm doing three things at once, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just doing things to accomplish them, to, to cross them off my list. And when I move like that through the world, I'm not paying any attention to the people that I'm in relationship with. 
I'm not paying any attention to my higher calling, which is a calling to create justice and goodness and, and more love here on earth. I'm not paying any attention to my deep inner sense and that feeling of uh, being disconnected from my true self. And so stillness is less about stopping. It's less about taking a break. And it's more about finding connection and relationship and presence in the midst of whatever it is we're doing. Make sense? It makes sense. And, you know, it seems to me people do deserve a break, if not many breaks. But I hear what you're saying, that stillness is reconnecting with something that's intentional. Mm -hmm. So you know that what you're doing is a matter of relationship and there's some richer wholeness in the doing. Absolutely. And so I'm certainly not saying that rest isn't a worthwhile pursuit. It is 100%. But I hear rest as something very different than stillness. Yes. It's time for our final question. Sounds intense, doesn't it? The final question. <laughs> it is a necessary and important and even a beautiful question. And I believe you're gonna ask this one to me. First. I am, I am. And the first place I ever heard this phrase was from uh, Walter Brueggemann, the, mm. the, the famous theologian. How is Sabbath resistance? Hmm. How is Sabbath resistance? Well, Sabbath is resistance to an external culture. It's also resistance to the way that we have imbibed that culture and brought it internal into ourselves. So that culture of needing to achieve and do and do more that we see in the exterior world and that culture in, within ourselves that is constantly compelling us to do and do more and to achieve. Sabbath is resistance to that. Sabbath is also resistance because it invites us into a space of connection and wholeness. And it invites us into a space of being rather than doing. So Sabbath is a place where all of the other wheels and cogs stop turning. And we focus in a different way from that place of stillness on the things that matter to us and matter to our world, like compassion and love and presence and relationship, and hope, and faith. And so to give our attention and our intention mm -hmm. to that is to resist anything that would pull us elsewhere. Hmm. Sabbath, rest, how is that resistance? Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about this question, again, the world commands in our culture that we pay attention to things outside of ourselves all the time. Mm -hmm. The demands of the marketplace, the demands of, of our bosses. Um, and Sabbath is resistance because we are reminding ourselves and those with whom we're in, we are in relationship mm -hmm. that a break, a rest for restoration, mm -hmm. for relationship, is actually part of how our lives should be organized. Yes. Sabbath is resistance because we are reminding the world that the world outside of our web of relationships is not going to always be the only one who gets our best. Mm. Sabbath is resistance because as you can hear our, our cat Gooby right now, he is one who has often taught me about Sabbath as resistance. I call him my nap coach. <laughs> and I take a nap every day, every day, virtually. And 
The reason I do this is because I used to have a really long commute and I had no choice. I would stay up late the night before, get up early, um, work as an electrician, and I would teach college at night and I would take a nap, sometimes in my van. Mm -hmm. um, and I just found it the most civilized thing that I do on a regular <laughs> basis. That is another sermon. Um, and, and the cat reminds me, yeah, you know, walk past the bedroom in a hurry and he'll look at me and make a noise. And yeah, it's nap time. And those of you in the congregation know that I don't make appointments unless it's an emergency or some other contingency between two and 6 p.m. I take a Sabbath virtually every day. I'm often working, but I'm, I'm working in my own space in my own way and taking a nap for part of that time too. Um, and so Sabbath is resistance because the world wants us always to be producing, producing, producing for the masters of industry, for the culture pharaohs. Does. Culture does, not the world. The culture does. Yes. 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 Um, and so that's what's trying to make a claim on us and, mm -hmm. and dig its claws a little deeper. Our culture wants us to always be on the clock. And I say no. I appreciate the other, uh, the metaphor there, the cat <laughs> metaphor dig its claws a little bit deeper. <laughs> I guess, I guess we're, we're being called today by the cat metaphors and by the, <laughs> the cat in our house. So Sabbath, I just want to finish on this. Sabbath is resistance because you matter. Sabbath is resistance because there is something essential and eternal in you that doesn't get tended by the fires of our culture, that only gets tended when we give ourselves that space to go inside and be present to our being rather than our doing. Yeah. So take a Sabbath, find rest, whether it's a daily nap, which really is a wonderful practice, or if it is a chance on Sunday or Monday or whatever day of the week you have to just focus, and it doesn't have to be alone, it can be with family, it can be with friends, but to focus on being rather than doing, because you are holy and whole, and you deserve that. Amen. So we hope that you have reflected with us <laughs> as we have been reflecting. And we have one final question for you, which we invite you to take with you as we go forward into this Sabbath day. <laughs> What do you need to let go of so that you can embrace stillness? What do you need to let go of so that you can embrace stillness? Our final hymn today is Come, O Sabbath Day. We welcome you to Find yourself somewhere in this beautiful hymn.
On this Sabbath day, we rest, and we make it possible for others to rest by giving to our offering. When you give to our offering, 80% of your gift will care for the Unitarian Universalist congregation at Montclair, and 20% will support our justice recipient. December's Sharing Our Riches recipient is Good Success Academies, a local not-for-profit led by the Reverend Alan Shelton that helps youth succeed in school, work, and life. Founded in 2010, Good Success Academies, in partnership with 17 area congregations, empowers and advocates for economically disadvantaged minority youth, works for education reform, and provides direct services such as tutoring, mentoring, and leadership development. Now in its 10th year, over 320 area youngsters have been served and aided in their success. You can text to give, mail us a check, or go to our homepage and click on the donate button. This is a time of need. All of your gifts are worthy, and they are all received with love. Come, O oh Sabbath day, and bring peace and healing on thy wing. And to every weary one, let a word of blessing come. Thou shalt rest. Thou shalt rest. Thou shalt rest. worship has ended, let our service begin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Join us right after this for Connection Cafe. Find stillness there. Rest. Take a Sabbath. And until we meet again. Virtually or otherwise. You, you are, are in our, our hearts. hearts. Set my course for 
don't start to cry And don't you act surprised You're seeing it all the time mm -hmm. It's just a state of life There's no use asking why Nobody's satisfied When I grow up I'm gonna be a star Maybe I'll even break my new guitar And then I'll be the real thing And everyone will want to be my friend They come a-knocking and I let them in It's going to be 